We're here with Jason Oppenheim, owner of the Oppenheim Group and star of Selling Sunset on Netflix. But before we get to Selling Sunset, we're going to talk about selling real estate. So what I've been hearing is a lot of doom and gloom in the market. Give us a reality check. What are you seeing out there? I'm not the doom and gloom type. I think we probably saw the bottom of the market at the end of 2022, um, probably saw the height of interest rates at the end of 2022. So I'm generally optimistic, uh, but I don't want to pretend that that means the real estate market's going to be you know, on the ascend. I'd say we're probably in for like some type of homeostasis, like just a not, not much growth, probably not much you know downward either do you think you said we've kind of reached what might be a homeostasis too for you in your business day to day what does that look like well it's we're gonna have a rough couple of years i think because volume is down so when i when i look at real estate i guess there's two things prices which is really what what the people care about and then there's volume which is what real estate agents care about in terms of prices, I think we're gonna, there's going to be some stability, which is probably healthy for the market. We can't have that kind of, you know, we don't want the spikes and, and, and downs. So I think we're going to see a relatively healthy market over the next few years in real estate as it relates to prices. And we've got a lot of people that own homes that have very low interest rate loans, and they're not going to be selling. So we're going to have low supply generally, probably low-ish demand. What are kind of some of the concerns you're seeing that transcend income brackets? Uh, interest rates largely transcend income brackets, although I think affect more the lower income brackets. That is really the hardest. I mean, people talk about affordability of homes. Uh, I mean, really, it's, it's the down payment. You got to come up with a down payment. That's always been difficult. But now you've not only do you have the down payment, now you got to pay a, you know, a five or six percent interest rate, even on a five or 10 year fixed. I think that will come down in the next couple of years. So I don't think it's a big deal if someone goes in and buys a house and has a 5% interest rate, and I don't recommend people getting 30 years anymore. You should probably get a five year. Probably you're gonna be able to refinance in a few years, and buying's always better than renting if you can hold the asset, and you can ride the ups and downs, and you can take you know, advantage of the appreciation over a decade or two decades, or hopefully three decades. Then I think buying really always makes sense. Doesn't make sense always in the short term. You've got transaction costs, um, and you know, you, you, you're, you're limited in your mobility when you're, a, when you're an owner. You're dealing with a lot of hassles when it comes to the roof leak. It's not the landlord's you know, fault anymore. Now it's your problem. So if you're looking to own and then and just for a couple of years, you know, probably consider renting. And here in L.A., where you know, when people are buying now in the situations where they are, where where are you seeing the money come from? Where are they? Where what professions generally are they in? Are there any kind of trends you've seen in the cases where people are are bucking the bucking the overall slowdown? There's a lot of wealth out there still. So. Um, yeah, I, I'm not concerned about the luxury market. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm not even really that concerned about any of the markets. There was an open house yesterday for a $1.6 million house up in the hills. 300 people came by the open house in this, in this you know, environment with these interest rates. So there's still demand out there. I think it's good. Two years ago, even a year ago, everything was selling. I don't think that's healthy. I mean, crap was selling. And I think that developers and, and People should be building quality product, and I think people should be more discerning and not being, you know, a year ago, literally, you'd get 10 offers on, on, on a crappy house uh, with no yard. Now, I think, again, it's back to a healthier market. My sense that what I'm kind of getting from you is that despite the, the doom and gloom narrative out there, um, the, there is right sizing happening, and there's also a lot of reshuffling going on from where you sit. Yeah, I mean, I think COVID changed a lot in our psyches. Uh, I mean, the at-home work, um, people more willing to, people focusing more on the house, more willing to move um, out of the city. It, I mean, you look at some of these states that, you know, were laughed at a few years ago, and now they are, you know, where everyone's moving. I mean, Austin, Texas, and Miami, and Las Vegas, and like Scottsdale, Arizona. I mean, these were not places people took as seriously as they do now. Um, and I, th that trend is, is not going to, obviously we're going to see some, some people coming back into the big cities. I think New York and Los Angeles will be fine. And I think those cities will have some difficulty the next couple of years, but they're on the map. Um, and now there's competition. You know, you don't have to live in LA. You don't have to live in San Francisco. You don't have to live in New York. You can now live in these other cities. Um, and I think that's going to be a, a draw away from some of the big cities. If we can't get a handle on some of these macro issues that we're dealing with. Um, I, I hope that we can. 
I'm, like I said, I'm generally an optimist. I think that people that make money in real estate and pretty much anywhere have to be optimistic. And last thing I wanted to ask you, Jason, in the middle of all this, right, selling Sunset blew up. Right, I'm sure you haven't been asked about it ever. Yeah, um, I'm just surprised it took this long. It took this long, yeah, what can I do, what can I say? Um, I wanted to surprise you, but I, my question is actually not about selling Sunset itself, but why you think it was so popular? I've thought about that, and I think it's because it checks a lot of different boxes for a lot of different people, and I, and I realize that because of the people that come up to me. It's such a wide swath and a different, uh, you know, demographics all the time. It's, How wide are we talking here? I mean, you just wouldn't believe. Well, to every country I go to, I've probably been to, you know, a dozen countries in the last couple of years. Um, and, and it's just every age group, every ethnicity, every, I mean, it could be from like a, a football player to like a seven-year-old girl to like a 85-year-old man. I mean, it's so weird. So I think, again, there's different checkboxes. Real estate is just fun to watch, you know, I, that's, my favorite thing about the show. Um, and I think that's probably what ties in so many different demographics of people. Then I think the beautiful women and the, oh, okay, fine, just the beautiful women. Um, <laughs> and the fashion, I think a ton of people love the, 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 the women's fashion, and I'm trying to do what I can now. Um, Los Angeles, Sunset Strip, you know, all the kind of restaurants and, 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 and nightclubs and lounges and uh, cafes and that kind of thing. So it's just, it's, and then, of course, there's the real-world drama uh, among, you know, successful, uh, beautiful women that are really striving to, you know, take control of their careers. So there is a lot for, for everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, Jason. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for everything.